Big investments into tech gaming firms. Welcome back to This Week in Esports and Gaming for the fourth week of September 2021. I missed a week. I apologize. Now I'm back better than ever before. I'm your host, Mark Kai, and let's get into it. For first top three story, Stream Elements, they raised $100 million. They say that the funding will go towards expanding services to uploaded videos on YouTube as well as live streams on Trovo, the live streaming platform funded by Tencent. The funding round was led by SoftBank Vision Fund 2 with participation from PayPal Ventures and MoreTech as well as existing investors, State of Mind Ventures, Patango First, Menorah, Mitvet, Shamir, and others. Most people know that there's a lasting war between Stream Elements and Stream Labs in regards to streamers and content creators, but both have been pushing forward in their own regards when it comes to business strategy. I don't work at either of these companies, so I can't speak from heart, but what it seems like from what I've observed is that Streamlabs are very creator focused, right? They're doing things like Streamlabs OBS, which are mainly focused on the creator themselves to bring ad or to add value directly to the content creator, whereas Stream Elements are more focused on the brand side initiatives, such as bringing brands to have sponsorships with those streamers. That being said, Streamlabs might have different initiatives from their top bosses because they are owned by Logitech. So who knows there? I don't work at Streamlabs, but I'm excited to see how Stream Elements will push forward here beyond those services of YouTube and Trovo with this extra money. Mary Atomic Mary Takahashi became a co-owner of Space Station Gaming. Mary is a streamy award winner and a CBS Survivor alumni. She was also a co-founder of Smosh Games and was named one of the top influencers in gaming by Forbes in 2017. So her 10 plus years of experience has included being a host and acting across various entertainment and gaming initiatives, as well as commercial work for Ericsson, Microsoft, Samsung, and Verizon. Mary will work alongside the team to continue Space Station Gaming growth and development. She will collaborate with Sean McBride, the current CEO, to expand creator and community aspects aspects of Space Station Gaming, as well as pushing further for esports championships across multiple video game titles. Mary brings such a huge amount of experience from the acting space to TV to gaming personality, and so there's not many like her in the actual video game and esports space. It'll be exciting to see how she innovates in the streaming and entertainment side of SSG, given that's her background. Dapper Labs raised $250 million, reaching a $7.6 billion valuation. The investment round was led by Co2 Ventures, preaching participation from existing investors such as Andreessen Horowitz, GV, Virgin One Ventures, and new investors, including Bond and Government of Singapore Investment Corporation. Dapper Labs is one of the pioneers of NFTs and blockchain gaming with the release of CryptoKitties back in 2017 and the creation of its Flow blockchain, which launched in 2020. As someone who really hasn't dived headfirst into the world of crypto, NFTs, and blockchain, chain like my fellow esports enthusiasts have been. I'm learning more and more about this industry and side of this gaming space every single day. It's interesting to see the rapid growth of companies like Dapper Labs and Axie Infinity with their respective crypto and NFT games amidst the similar crypto scandals and esports that of, of formerly Phase K for the pump and dump scheme he had with cryptocurrencies. Dapper has seen significant growth exceeding $780 million in NBA Top Shot collectibles traded over 13 million transactions. They've also been able to drive partnerships in strength with brands like the NBA and UFC to drive even more engagement across those audiences respectively. I'll be curious to see how their competitors respond in the ever-growing presence of blockchain and NFTs. As far as partnerships go, Sony partnered with Garena on the Free Fire and Venom crossover. The crossover event will launch ahead of the movie on October 10th and will feature elements of Venom and Carnage via exclusive in-game collectibles as well as items and costume bundles. They are also expected to feature references to Free Fire in the movie. Fnatic partnered with ASOS, the multi-million pound partnership will include on and offline activations as well as ASOS's logo placement on the front of Fnatic's jerseys. This will include the organization's League of Legends World Championship jersey, which is scheduled to debut next week. HyperX partnered with Mina Stess, the 15-year-old skateboarding phenom. Stess will exclusively wear and promote HyperX gaming headsets while participating in various HyperX marketing initiatives, including social activations and the company's ongoing We Are All Gamers campaign. Blast partnered with Riot Games for the second edition of the Valorant Spike Nations Charity Tournament. That's a handful. The event set to take place from October 7th through the 9th. We'll see Riot Games donate 60,000 euros to charity. Efuse partnered with Esports Collegiate. The partnership will see Efuse produce, stream, and coordinate 280 competitive matches for the ESC's 14 teams across a three-month season. Mad Lions partnered with El Corte Inglés. The DLC El Corte Inglés dress Mad Lions players and coaching staff with a combination of Easy Wear, Green Coast, and Emidio Tucci fashion brands. Advocate partnered with CLG to help manage CLG's marketing campaigns effortlessly on Twitch and other platforms. PlayVS partnered with the Special Olympics of North America. PlayVS will serve as the official high school esports league operator for the U.S. for the Special Olympics Unified Esports. The initiative will focus on growing the program which combines students with and without intellectual disabilities on inclusive esports teams. 
Team Gilla partners with Seco Vision. The two parties will collaborate to educate gamers on the importance of eye health with Seco Vision, utilizing Team Gilla's social media channels to reach a new target group to market its range of frames and lenses. Rivalry partnered with OO Brazil. The agreement will see both parties collaborate on a variety of content and social media campaigns, as well as exchanging select signage opportunities across physical and digital channels. Twitch partnered with the National Music Publishers Association. The deal means that the music publishers will be offered an opt-in deal allowing for future collaborations. According to Kotaku, this will make for a process that is more flexible and forgiving to creators who inadvertently or incidentally use music in their streams at an existing process required under the DNCA and similar global laws. For finance and M&A, Misfits Gaming Group raised $35 million. Of that $35 million, EW Skip's company invested $10 million into Misfits Global Esports Organization, which includes their Overwatch, Call of Duty, and League of Legends teams. As a result, they will appoint a designee to MCG's board of directors, and EW Scripps will gain rights to distribute MCG's content through its linear TV platforms in Florida and across the U.S. Team Nigma merged with Galaxy Racer to be called Nigma Galaxy. Nigma Galaxy will operate as a standalone entity with a separate budget, brand, and identity. The esports division will be led by Team Nigma's co-founders, and the merger will also see Galaxy Racers retain its brand identity, with the organization now looking to focus on content creation and additional branches. So Rare raised $680 million in their Series B. It is considered the largest Series B in all of Europe and the largest funding in the history of French tech. The proceeds are expected to go towards a lot of things like team expansion, new partnerships, entering mobile, more marketing, and adding new products beyond European football. My Games acquired Mambu Games. Based in Belarus, Mambu Games was founded in 2020 and has already released a variety of hyper-casual titles including Billion Builders, Space Rover, Viking Life, and Smoothie Master. As a part of the acquisition, My Games will pay in excess of the $2 million closed and additional payments based on business performance of Mambu. As far as workforce changes go, Ryan Crosby was promoted to the president of publishing. Crosby joined Riot Games in January of 2021 as the head of global entertainment marketing and consumer products. In his new role, Crosby will lead Riot's worldwide publishing group of over 1,000 team members in 20 plus global offices. This group is comprised of international publishing, global marketing, player support, localization, commercial initiatives, and other key functions as well. Michael Speakman joins Order as the head of commercial. Michael will help navigate Order's commercial opportunities by offering a creative space for brands to connect. He previously worked with multiple well-known Australian sporting bodies including Golf Australia, the Australia Grand Prix Corporation, and most recently Tennis Australia. Zoe Eng joins Galaxy Racer as a regional marketing manager. Zoe will be responsible for leading regional marketing initiatives in Southeast Asia for both Galaxy Racer and Nigma Galaxy, the organization's esport division. Zoe was previously a marketing and business development exec at a Singapore-based esports consultancy agency called Select Start PTE and was a social media manager for Yahoo Esports Southeast Asia. Tom Green joins Blast as the Chief Growth Officer. Tom joins the company following a six-year spell working at the Harry Potter movie franchise. Tom Green joins Blast as the Chief Growth Officer. Tom joins the company following a six-year spell working with the Harry Potter movie franchise. As Blast's Chief Growth Officer, Tom will aim to increase the company's audience and consumer base. He will also utilize his experience of building products to attract attention of key demographics and diversify the TO's product offerings. Bertrand Bodson joins Keyword Studios as the CEO. He joins from the healthcare company Novartis, where he's been the chief digital officer since January of 2018. Prior to that, he spent four years as the chief digital marketing officer at Sainsbury Argos. He brings a stellar international business background to Keyword Studios that will help the company's expansion across multiple territories. As far as new stuff goes, Felicia Day launched her own crypto coin. Felicia partnered with Rally to bring her own crypto coin called Geeks that will allow fans to have exclusive access to fan events and merchandise such as purchasing signed photos, podcast shoutouts, video gifts, and a book club for crypto holders. Black Ice opened their new facility in Minneapolis. The new venue will act as a training facility for both low-level and professional gamers and will serve as a local social club for gamers as well. That's it for this week in esports and gaming. Thank you so much for tuning in. Credit to the publications, authors, and brands themselves for the images and press releases. If you know someone who'd find this valuable, please tag them down below and share as well. Once again, have a great day, everybody.